Hello everyone, I am Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem that is Pascal triangle. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? Given a positive integer n, return the nth row of the Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle is a triangular array of the binomial coefficients formed by summing up the elements of the previous row. So basically, there is a triangle which is basically called Pascal's triangle which follows, which is made by following a certain condition and in that we need to return the nth row. Okay, The elements can be large so return it modulo 10k power 9 plus 7. So uh, the values in the nth row can be quite large so we need to return them modulo 10k power 9 plus 7. So this is basically Pascal's triangle in which which uh, this is the first row which has element 1, this is the second row which has element 1 and 1. Then uh, if you can see the first row is 1 element, second row has 2 elements, third row has 3 elements, fourth row has 4 elements, fifth row has 5 elements and so on. Also in first row there is only single element 1, in the second row there are 2 elements 1, 1. From the third row onwards the first and last elements are 1 and other than those elements the remaining elements are made by summing up the 2 elements from the above row. Okay. So, if you look here, so this is one, this two is made by summing these two elements and this is the last one. If we look at this row, then this is one, this element is made by summing up these two elements from the previous row, this element is made by summing up these two elements from the previous row and this element is one. So, first and last elements are one and the remaining elements made by summing up the two elements, one from the left side and one from the right side from the above row and in that way we get the complete triangle. For example, if n equals to 4, we need to return the fourth row. This is the fourth row. The values in the fourth row are 1, 3, 3, 1. So, we need to return 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay. Fourth row of Pascal's triangle is 1, 3, 3, 1. Similarly, fifth row is this. Complete the function nth row of Pascal's triangle which takes n as input parameters and returns an array representing the answer. You don't need to print the answer or take input. So, basically, we need to return an array which represents the n elements of the nth row. Okay. The expected time complexity is big O of n square and expected auxiliary space is big O of n square and the constraints are given here. So, if we think about solving this problem, so see, let us observe the Pascal's triangle again. So, the first row has only single element 1, the second row has two elements 1, 1. From the third row onwards, the first and last elements are 1 and the remaining elements are made by summing up the two elements from the above row, one from the left side and one from the right side. So, basically, if there are two elements, I will, I will write down the three elements on the below row, one year, one year and one year in between the gaps, okay. So, this element will be made by summing up these two elements that is 1 plus 1, 2 and the last element will be 1. So, the first row has 1 element, the second row has 2 elements, the third row has 3 elements, the fourth row has 4 elements, the fifth row has 5 elements, the sixth row has 6 elements and so on. Okay. Now, if we write down the fourth row, then the first element is 1. This element is made by summing up these two elements. So, 1 plus 2 is 3. This element is made by summing these two elements that is 2 plus 1, 3 and the last element will be 1. The fifth row, first element is 1, this element is made by summing these two elements that is 4, this element is made by summing these two elements that is 3 and 3, 6, this element is made by summing these two elements that is 4 and the last element is 1. If we look at the sixth row, the first element is 1, this element will be 4 plus 1, 5, this element will be 4 plus 6, 10, this element will be 6 plus 4, 10, this element will be 4 plus 1, 5 and the last element will be 1 and so on, okay. So, basically we are given n that is the row number in the input and we need to return the nth row of the Pascal's triangle. So, now how can we implement this? So, basically see what we can do is we can take two arrays, one is let's say a1 and one is a2, okay a1 is will be used to generate all odd rows okay and a2 will be used to generate all even number rows okay so now basically what we can do is we can initialize a1 with 1 there is only one element uh, describing the first row and a2 with 1 1 describing the second row. Now from a3 onwards we can see I uh, this is the third row it will be stored in a1 because 3 is odd. Now this can be generated using this a2 right because initially a1 is 1 and a2 is 1 1. Now, I will use a2 and generate a3, which is nothing but what? 1, 2, 1. Now, uh, so basically, this is the third row which will be stored in a1. Okay. Now, the fourth row will be stored in a2 and it will be generated using this a1, which is basically storing the third row right now. So, a2 will be equal to 1, 
थ्री थ्री वन ओके नाउ हाउ विल वी डू दिस सो बेसिकली वेन एवर आई एम जनरेटिंग अ पर्टिक्युलर एलिमेंट इन अ पर्टिक्युलर रो इफ दैट एलिमेंट इज द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट और द लास्ट एलिमेंट इट्स वैल्यू विल बी वन इफ दैट एलिमेंट इज नॉट द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट और द लास्ट एलिमेंट लेट सपोज इन द आई एथ रो आई एम जनरेटिंग जे एथ एलिमेंट then that element will be equal to the sum of the elements of j minus 1 index and j index from the above row so what i'm trying to tell is see a2 is basically representing fourth uh, fourth row right now right now let's say i want to generate a uh, fifth row which will be stored in a1 okay so the first element will be one i know there will be five elements okay so the first element will be one what will be second element so a1 of i will be equals to a1 or uh, a2 of i minus 1 plus a2 of i okay so the first index element will be equal to sum of this and this look here the first index elements will be sum of zero index and first index okay so that will be 4 the second index element will be sum of first index and second index first index and second index sum will be stored at second index that will be 6 similarly third index element will be sum of second index and third index from the a2 so this will be 4 and the last element will be 1 now using this and using this equation i will generate a2 so uh, a1 will uh, contain the elements of the odd row a2 will contain the elements of the even row and i will keep on generating until i reach n and then finally i will return the row containing the elements of the nth row let's look at its implementation So if we look at the implementation, so I have taken two rows A1 and A2. This will hold the values of the odd number of rows, and this will hold the values of the even number of rows. And I have taken one mod 10 to power 9 plus 7 to take mod at different places. First of all, I have initialized the first row in A1, which is equal to zero. There is only one element, and A2 of zero equals to A2 of one equals to one, which is describing the second row. Then from third row up till nth row, I will be generating new rows. So if i is equals to even, if i modulo to is zero, so I will be storing the answers in A2 because the row number is E1 and I will be using A1 as the previous row. So in the I row there will be I number of elements. So they will be from zero to I minus one. Okay. If it is the first element or if it is the last element, simply write A2 of J equals to one. If they are not the first or last element, then A2 of J will be equal to A1 of J minus one, uh, J minus one index and J index element. They are sum from A1. Okay, because that is the previous odd number row having values. And modulo mod. Similarly, if i is even, so we will be storing the values in a1 and using a2 as the previous row. So for j equals to zero to i minus one, if it is the first or last element, make it equal to one. Else, make it equal to a1 of j equals to a2 of j minus one plus a2 of j modulo mod. Then finally, I will store since uh, uh, they want the answer to be stored in vector, so I have taken one vector answer. And in that, I will uh, if n is even. So if the row number which I need to return is even, then my answer will be in a2. If n is odd, my answer will be in a1. So for i equals to zero to n minus one, answer dot pushback a2 of i or answer dot pushback a1 of i. And finally, I will return the answer vector. What would be the time complexity? See, I am generating all the elements from the first row to the nth row. First row has one element, second row has two elements, third row has three elements, up to nth row has n elements. Which is nothing but n into n plus one by two. So the time complexity will be equal to big O of n square. And what would be the auxiliary space required here? See, I am using only two arrays, a one and a two, and vector answer. Okay, this will contain n elements. Uh, a one or and a two will also contain order of n elements. These are array of size n plus one. So the total auxiliary space here will be big O of n. I hope you understood it. Now let's submit this code. So let's submit it. So we have solved this question successfully. I hope you have understood the solution completely. Thank you.